This right here is the latest Asus VivoBook S laptop. It's truly special because it's as fast as a dragon. After all, it is powered by a Snapdragon chip. Now, before I end my career with these outrageously lame jokes, let's get real. Configured with Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite processor, 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X memory, a nice large one terabyte SSD, the Adreno iGPU, also configured with Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 standards and rocking a 15 inch OLED panel. This laptop really is special. Aside from all the cool features, it's the first VivoBook that's truly powered for Windows ARM. And we're gonna see what this laptop is all about, whether or not it's worth your hard earned cash. So let's get into it. This thing comes in some pretty standard cardboard packs Packaging, nothing fancy here. Once you open up the box, inside behind some more protective packaging, here it is, the VivoBook in the flesh, but we'll visit that in just a minute. You also have a chunky 90 watt adapter here that could have been a little bit more slim if ASUS would just ditch the chunky square form factor they've been using for a while. You also have the standard wall out there charging cable piece, and then finally some basic documentation. I genuinely believe this is the most beautiful VivoBook we've seen to date. Everything about its mature design with those subtle curvatures and those really subtle design elements combined with a very symmetrical look just make this laptop look absolutely stunning. It's also got a semi-premium build thanks to a half metallic exterior. Additionally, this laptop only has a overall weight of just 3.13 pounds, which makes it exceptionally light for a 15 inch device. Starting with the top side, like I mentioned, you have a clean metallic exterior. That silver color looks stunning here. No unnecessary textures. Also, I love the choice of font they've used for that Asus VivoBook branding over here. IO port diversity is super healthy on this device. On one side, you've got a HDMI 2.1 port. You've also got two USB 4 Type-C ports, both with full functions. And then you have a micro SD card reader, which let's be honest, could have been a full size SD card reader if Asus wanted. You also have a headphone jack. On the other side, you have two more USB-A super speed ports. So overall, plenty of IO connections. The bottom side of the laptop is a plastic removable lid. You'll also notice you have nice long air intake vents that are linear in form factor, though there is only a single fan here. And additionally, this is a bottom firing speaker setup, so you have a speaker grill on either corner. When you unfold this laptop, the first thing you'll appreciate is the generous amount of palm rest space you have here. Again, thanks to that 15 inch form factor, which is becoming pretty rare these days. Now you'll also notice the silver color really complements the inner chassis really nicely over here. At the center, you do have a pretty large trackpad with lots of surf real estate. Unfortunately, it is a plastic surface finish, which means you do have a little bit of flex, but it's not as bad as you might think. Additionally, the trackpad does feel relatively tactile and makes for a decent experience overall. This keyboard straight up looks like a copy and paste from HP's previous generation Pavilion laptops. They've got the same square keycaps here with a silver on silver tone going. Even the font looks kind of close to it, to be honest with you. However, what makes this keyboard stand out is that it has backlighting, but not any ordinary backlighting, full RGB backlighting, which is very rare for a non-gaming laptop. Additionally, you do have a built-in number pad, thanks to that 15 inch form factor. As far as typing quality is concerned, you have a ample amount of key travel here thanks to those large keycaps and tactility isn't bad either it does have a bit of a soft finishing but as far as keyboards go this is definitely one of the better ones i've seen this year I can't say I'm the biggest fan of the two tier hinge mechanism Asus has opted to use over here, but I will admit there is a very limited amount of wobble and yes, you can open this thing with a single hand. Now, as far as display fitting goes, you have a somewhat noticeable chin at the bottom because Asus opted to include some branding. However, the side bezels are nice and narrow providing for a good immersive view. And additionally, the top side has a relatively thin forehead at the center of which you have a IR equipped full HD webcam, which does well enough in most low light to medium lit settings. Today's video is in partnership with AOE. This right here is the Starship Twin One Power Bank. It's loaded with a large 40,000 milliamp hour capacity battery, which means it can charge multiple devices multiple times. It has a maximum input output rate up to 140 watts, which is insane for a power bank, which means it can fast charge pretty much any device you connect to it. It has a total of three outgoing USB ports, two Type-C and one Type-A. 
all of which again support fast charging and it's got one input port which also supports 140 watt charging. Now you also have this really cool digital display over here which shows you everything from the capacity of the bank itself to the various wattages going in or out of the actual power bank to the various ports. And it's got a really cool sci-fi design that, well, in case you didn't guess, is kind of based off a starship, but ultimately it still has a very portable and sleek form factor despite its large capacity. If you want to learn more about this awesome power bank that can also serve as a power station, I will leave links in the video description below so you can check it out. The display is one of my favorite things about this laptop. So we've got a high density 3K resolution screen here with a gorgeous OLED panel, a 120 Hertz refresh rate for that smooth imagery. Additionally, we do have a maximum SDR brightness of 400 nits, but that number can go all the way up to 600 nits with HDR content. Now, because it's an OLED panel, you do have a gloss finish, but thanks to the high brightness, you can overcome any glare that comes your way. Color accuracy is just as impressive. You've got a 100% sRGB rating or 99% DCI-P3 rating, which means this laptop is more than capable of handling creative use cases. A quick recap of the technical specs we have on board. So we've got Snapdragon's X Elite processor, though it's worth noting we have the X1E78 processor, which is the lowest tier one. The missing feature here would be the dual boost functionality that the higher tier X Elite processors have. You also get 32 gigabytes of super fast LPDDR5X memory, and we do have the Adreno GPU, which is technically an integrated GPU. Now, as far as day-to-day -day performance is concerned, it's super fast and snappy, whether it's surfing the web, typing up some Word documents, it's going to feel great. Even more demand activities like program and coding are a total breeze for this machine for the most part thanks to a ample amount of system memory and horsepower. Now when you try doing more demanding activities, especially in the creative world such as photo or video editing, that's where you really start seeing limitations of Gen 1 ARM products. I mean there is a lot of frame drop going on with programs like DaVinci Resolve which by the way are running on their ARM variant. Additionally, if you do anything more than full HD editing, it's almost non-viable due to the sheer amount of frame drops and lag you encounter. Even with full HD editing though, I found if you add more than two layers, it becomes a tedious and difficult process to edit on a timeline. Now, gaming performance is in a bit of a similar pickle. When you compare it to similar iGPUs from Intel and AMD, I found that you're getting about a 50% performance drop. Granted, some of this is because of the translation going on in the background. However, games like Counter-Strike Go are barely hitting 30 frames per second with a ton of frame drops, whereas to with Intel's Arc graphics, for example, you'd be hitting well above 60 with similar graphical settings. In the world of thermals, that's where we really see ARM chips shine out. So under unrealistic peak loads, we hit a maximum average surface temperature just around 37 degrees Celsius with more realistic sustained loads yielding around 34 degrees Celsius, which is about 10 degrees cooler on average compared to the last generation VivoBook. Pretty impressive. Fan noise, same thing, super quiet. You can hardly even tell the fan is on, but when you really push this machine, you get a maximum of around 41 to 42 decibels, which is pretty quiet, all things considered. self upgrade options are extremely limited, so the the only real component you can technically upgrade is the M.2 drive to a maximum of two terabytes. Everything else is soldered on board. You've got a nice large 70 watt hour battery. Combine that with the efficiency of ARM processors, you can get up to 14 and a half hours of runtime on a single charge based on our real world use case test. As far as speaker quality is concerned, it's not bad. This thing gets pretty loud. There is a bit of depth. Now it's not gonna be as good as like the likes of the Dell XPS series or even Asus's own ZenBook series, but here's a kick sound test for reference. Just try, oh my, got only one life, got only this time, we gonna get it right, you gotta let go, oh, oh, of those who don't, oh, oh, belong in your tribe, so cut the bad out of your life, get to it one time, one time, you gotta work. With an approximate retail value of 1400 US dollars for the configuration of the VivoBook S we have here, the fact is this is very much a premium tier laptop, even if Asus doesn't necessarily brand it that way. So let's talk about the good, bad, and the ugly real quick. So the pros obviously include the fact that you get a stunning 3K OLED panel, a semi-premium build, a refreshed design, great IO port diversity, and extreme efficiency in both thermals, and of course battery life, thanks to Snapdragon's X Elite chip, which also is a great general productivity chip. However, on the same note, if you are gonna be doing a lot of heavy duty activities, whether it's let's say casual gaming, 
doing video or photo editing or other types of heavy duty activities. The fact is that a traditional x86 chip is still superior in the raw performance department, even though it comes to the cost of efficiency with those kind of laptops. So my take is if you're looking for a laptop that can last as long as possible for day to day productivity, get this device. Thanks to that stunning display, it's definitely a deal maker. But for the more heavy duty stuff, at least for this generation, you may want to stick with traditional Intel and AMD variants. Let me know what you think of the latest Asus VivoBook S laptop. And I am aware I didn't talk about Copilot Plus functionality, by the way. I'll cover that in a separate video. I just wanted to keep this review as objective to the laptop specifications as possible. As always, thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.